just as a datum point. The lap speeds were around 122.2 before, and now Schumacher goes through. Now, has Senna got a problem? It's most unlike the Brazilian to yield voluntarily, first to Prost and then to Schumacher. Well, I've got a what possible answer is that Senna is going to come into the pits, I presume, for tyres. But uh, we don't know for sure. There's six retirements, incidentally. Yes, we have news, and it's definitely for tyres. Ayrton Senna coming in. And so is Schumacher. So both of them in. Schumacher and Senna. Big pressure on the pit crews now. This could, could change the race because whoever is out first is going to have a big advantage. Senna goes out in 6.8 seconds. And I've missed a big... Yes, Schumacher behind him. So Senna has regained the second place that he temporarily held on that lap. No, I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll build himself a cushion because you need that. These cars are very complicated. If small things... Uh, anything small goes wrong with it towards the end of the race he'll want that cushion and uh, that is the professional thing to do and i should think he'd certainly go for 20 seconds at least before he uh, said that was enough and comfortable enough it may be uh, still that it's going to be marginal to get to the end of the race on tires so he'll be he'll be keen uh, as soon as possible probably when he gets to about 10 seconds away just to take it easy on the tires and not over push the tires not spin the wheels too much or, or overheat them and uh, he can do that and still probably find a way to pull away with William superiority I'm afraid uh, it's not much use trying to hide it from the others uh, it's plain for all to see there's the battle for second there was Sean and Lacey in the pits for tires he was in fourth position and while he's getting out, let me tell you that there are nine different constructors in the first ten places, and that is very healthy for Formula One. And this is healthy too. Senna fighting Schumacher for second place. Alain Prost is clearing off. He's just gone round in one minute, 19.89. That's another fastest lap, and he is eight seconds ahead of this battle for second place. But it's Williams leading, McLaren second, Benetton third, Benetton fourth, Ferrari fifth, Ligier sixth, Sauber seventh, Rubens Barrichello in the, in the Jordan is in 8th position. Ninth is Fittipaldi in the Minardi. 10th is Johnny Herbert in the Lotus. That's how different it is on the Grand Prix in South Africa, the first of the year. But Ayrton Senna would appear now to be settling for second position. Ten and a, ten, over ten and a half seconds behind Alain Prost. And the question is, can the charging young German, Michael Schumacher, who carries number five this year get the head of the Brazilian and a word about Kyle Army because this is not the old Kyle Army it's a completely new circuit which was used for the first time in 1991 after the expenditure of a great deal of money which has produced a magnificent track with superb facilities in the form of uh, pits garages grandstands all the things you want they've been leaking and they haven't been able to get the, the hydraulic pressure that they need for it to work properly but uh, that's the one they're going to concentrate on developing, and uh, they feel they've done some useful test mileage at least. Well, we're, we're with... Uh, during the winter, he is being, he's facing a disciplinary body of the World Council on the 18th of this month, and it's not inconceivable that he will be suspended. If he was suspended, in, uh, in my opinion, it would be a tragic reflection on Formula One, especially now that Senna is back, because we need the racing of the kind that Senna and Prost have been giving us this afternoon. Senna is dropped back, admittedly, but remember that this McLaren is only in its initial stages. There is an enormous amount of development potential there, particularly with the electronics. And if McLaren got the slightly more powerful engine from Ford that Schumacher behind Senaton has got, uh, they could be up with the Williams team. And it would be a great pity if Prost wasn't driving. The runners are being depleted, but the top three are pressing on, and particularly the second and third, and you're looking at them now. Ayrton Senna and uh, Michael Schumacher. There are four Germans standing in front of me with uh, enormous German flags who are nearly going berserk every time Michael Schumacher passes in their efforts to attract his attention by waving the German flag at him. I just hope for his sake that they don't attract his attention because uh, the corner after the start and finish straight is a very quick one indeed. And here he is, Michael Schumacher in the blue and white helmet and in the yellow and green Benetton Ford, still pushing, pushing, pushing. And Ayrton Senna, of course, looking for world championship points. We don't know whether he is going to be racing in uh, Grand Prix after this one. It depends on all sorts of negotiations. Not entirely disassociated with money, I might say. But uh, assuming that he is, he wants every world championship point that he can get. Three times world champion already. He would get six points for the second position that he's holding now. 
And Alain Prost would get 10 points for the position he's holding now. But we are now on the half-distance lap with nine retirements out of the 26 starters, with Prost constantly increasing his lead, and he's just put up another fastest lap, 1 minute 19.729. And uh, there is the battle, the continuing battle between Senna and Schumacher crossing the line, and they are now 16.5, 16 and a half seconds behind Alain Prost, lapping some 7 tenths, 8 tenths of a second slower than the Frenchman in the lead. There was a remote chance of rain, which I hope doesn't hit the circuit, but if it does, it's certainly going to spice things up, because everybody would have to come in and put on uh, a set of wet goodyears that have this asymmetrical trade pattern, which uh, makes it a pretty exciting tyre to look at, as this is exciting too. No change, and, and Schumacher is pushing. If you're in that position, James, and, and you've got dirty air billowing about in front of you and a very difficult course to pass on, what has to be your plan? Well, it's, uh, it's extremely uh, um, tiring and stressful to drive right up to uh, somebody's exhaust. And uh, for this reason, one tends to make one's attacks in, uh, in sort of bursts. But uh, Schumacher is young and strong, and he seems to be consistently trying to parry Senna. Of course, he's, he's buoyed by the fact that he feels he's got a chance of forcing a mistake and getting through. And he's, uh, he's, he's looked like, it, like he might get through a couple of times. Fiddy Paldi is in sixth position. Johnny Herbert. Schumacher out. That's Michael Schumacher out of the race. Well, he spun. It looks as if he stalled the engine. The up steering wheel off, so... End of the day's work for Michael Schumacher. Yes, because uh, if you're pushed... Hello, here, this is what happened. Schumacher trying to take Ayrton Senna. Now, let's see if the Brazilian moved across. Indeed, he did. There's going to be a big argument about this. This, this if you look at it, is uh, reminiscent of the Senna and Prost coming together at the opening of the Japanese Grand Prix. And did they touch? Here's a replay. Yes, they did. Well, it is... I always hate to apportion blame because only the people in the cockpit knew what happened. But from your point of view, James, would you say that there was any blame to either driver? Well, I think uh, Schumacher could be justified in feeling that, uh, that he'd got enough inside Senna, maybe to have made Senna make room. But the problem is, you know who you're dealing with. And it was pretty predictable that Ayrton Senna would uh, stick to his line and uh, just... <laughs>